So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Thomas. Which she she thinks I took off today to do wedding stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 no, I told her I did. So I was like, yeah, I'm stopping by Fargo for an hour. <laughs> oh, <boy. Yeah. laughs> no, she she would have figured it out. But uh, the rest of the day is dedicated to wedding related activities. Right. Right. He's got a list there. Right. Yeah. I just do have a list here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, my name is Chris Hollins, and I think most of you guys know me. Um, I'm on the board here with North Carroll Business Alliance. Um, I got brought in shortly after uh, the, the organization got started. Um, I was just trying to get some uh, financial work done with Matt, and then he uh, pulled me into it. So I got a little bit more out of it than I asked for. <laughs> um, but, no, I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, professionally, I, um, I serve in Governor Hogan's administration. I've uh, been there for uh, just over five years. Um, I, the whole time I've been there, I have been working in MTA, which is the buses, the trains, light rail, mark train, all the good stuff that uh, we do not want in Carroll County. And uh, mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to throw that out there so I don't end up in a ditch. I don't want anyone to think I'm promoting mass transit in Carroll County. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can barely keep the buses and trains running where we have it, let alone <laughs> bring it to places that don't want it. <laughs> Um, but I work for the MTA in the Office of Procurement. Uh, I run the Contracts Division. Um, so we're putting in place contracts. I mean, on average, I mean, almost all of our contracts are easily over a million dollars. Uh, some, I think the biggest one I've done was uh, half a billion dollars. I mean, whenever you're dealing with trains and uh, and mass transit, I mean, we're building this Purple Line uh, down in PG County. It's it's expensive. <laughs> So um, that's what I do professionally. Before that, I worked for the Allegis Group doing contracts. The Allegis Group is a um, big staffing conglomerate owned by Steve Bishotti. That's how he got his money to own the Ravens. Um, but yeah, so I've been the Hogan administration for five years. Um, politically, um, been involved in, I don't know, dozens and dozens of different candidates, campaigns, anywhere from local municipal races <laughs> to county to state. Um, I, uh, I was elected five or four years ago to the Carroll County Republican Central Committee, which is the overseeing body of the Republican Party on the county level. Um, I was then uh, elected statewide to the uh, to the to the state board of the Republican Party. So I was the third vice chairman on the Republican Party for the state. So helping folks across the entire state, uh, helping build the party. Um, and in 2020, I uh, was elected to. Um, go to the 2020 RNC convention as a uh, delegate um, to, to cast a vote really for, for Maryland for uh, Donald Trump at the time, President Trump at the time. Um, so that's a little bit about my political background. Another, th uh, another thing is I've worked for the Carroll County Times for four years, not as a reporter, <coughs> but as an opinion columnist, which is fun because every other uh, Monday I got to basically run my mouth and say whatever I wanted to say. <laughs> and uh, was, for the most part, I was not really told what I couldn't say. Um, and although the one thing when I was brought in the editor, he did not want me writing about national things, which was fine. He wanted me writing only about local government and politics, which is fun other than the fact that you run into these people. Um, <laughs> so it's one thing, you know, if you want to, you know, run your mouth about Joe Biden or Trump, whoever, you're never going to run into these guys in the grocery store. The people that I was talking about, you know, local government and politics, <laughs> I eventually will bump into them, and uh, so that was always fun. But uh, I, I really enjoyed that because I got to use that uh, opportunity to meet a lot of good people and to push different issues that I felt were important. Like one that um, one uh, column that I wrote was about uh, Route 30 here in Manchester. Obviously, we all know anybody who lives around here knows that all the traffic gets dumped here ever since the bypass got built. And I wrote a piece. Um, basically proposing, I mean, it was kind of a crazy idea, but I proposed a reversible third lane. Uh, I never heard any feedback from the town, but I tossed it out there. I did a little research, checked the state highway, and threw out what I, what I, what I gathered, but I uh, didn't hear much back, but uh, I don't know, we'll revisit that. Uh, another thing I, I wrote many times about North Carroll High School and the fate of that and the many different many different phases we went through with the school and on the future of it, fighting just for the building to even remain intact, because if many of you remember, at one point there was, you know, talks of just completely demolishing it, like you saw with Charles Carroll. So 
I many, many, many of times use my column to really advocate to, to save that building and to use it for the community. And uh, it's going through many different crazy, uh, there could be a whole bunch of written on that school in the last six years, I think. Um, and then the uh, another thing I wrote, and I'll get back to that, was um, like Chuck said, I'm running for state delegate. Um, currently, we're represented by um, our delegation is just Senator Justin Reedy, and then uh, Delegate Haven Shoemaker, Delegate Susan Krebs, and Delegate Rose. Delegate Shoemaker and Krebs are not coming back. Uh, Krebs is retiring. Uh, she's been there for 20 years. Um, she's done a really great job. And Haven Shoemaker um, is running for state attorney. So there's two out of three openings. And if anybody pays attention to around the state, it's not very often that there are two out of three uh, vacancies in, in, uh, in a state delegate race. Um, I have been working closely with them for the last decade, um, helping behind the scenes, whether it was going down to Annapolis and shadowing with them each, each and every year, um, helping propose legislation, testify legislation. Um, did not exactly want to run this go around just because this whole little wedding thing going on uh, in two days. Um, but uh, once once the opportunity presented itself, like I said, there's not there's not a lot of times where you see two vacancies. And I really feel like I have the experience. Like I said, it's been more behind the scenes. But someone needs to step up. I stepped up. Molly, depending on the day, is happy I stepped up. Other times she's says, you know, why did I sign off on this during during our wedding season for you to run for office? <laughs> Um, but one of the bills that I was uh, really happy to work on and propose was, um, other than you, pro uh, Brandon probably hates this bill, <laughs> my, two, my 2 a.m. Uh, bar time bill. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so Carroll County, uh, Carroll County uh, had a 1 a.m. Uh, bar closing time for the long, longest time. Meanwhile, Baltimore County, Frederick County. Uh, PA has a 2 a.m. and I wrote a column once and I, and I talked to Jim DeWeese and I talked to business owners and I you know I kind of I said you know why why does Carroll County have a 1 a.m. when everybody else has 2 a.m. and nobody really is just like well it's just always the way it was and the one thing I found interesting talking with the sheriff was because just you know from you know, a thousand feet away you think like oh well, the sheriff's not gonna be for that the sheriff the sheriff said yeah I would rather be 2 a.m. and I'll tell you why because Jason backed me up on this. Um, the uh, a lot of the bar, whether it was a town over on the other side of town, yeah. <laughs> or whether it's um, uh, full moon down at the end of 140. Long drive. What, yeah, the sheriff was seeing what was people they drive when the when it gets about 10. And Brandon, you know this from being in Spargo's. When it gets to a certain time, people would race out and go over the county line to the <laughs> bar to stay open a little bit later. So, anyways, the sheriff was in favor of of moving because he says if I'm going to have people driving drunk, I'd rather than do it. You know, drive five minutes in their house and thirty minutes down the road and back. Um, so, anyways, that was that was a column I wrote and proposed uh, that, and the delegation liked the idea. I worked with them, um, and the bill was proposed and didn't get too much pushback from the uh, from the rest of the general assembly, and it was passed. And uh, actually, unfortunately, of course, it went into effect during COVID when bars weren't open past ten p.m. But eventually, anyways, now if bars they had the choice, they're not forced to. Which Brandon, I think. What time do you guys close? Two. Two. Okay. Two. All right. So yeah. So now that bars have the option in Carroll, because why? My my thought was, why do businesses in Carroll County have to be a disadvantage from the surrounding counties when they've got an extra hour? So anyhow, that was one of the things that I was uh, proud to kind of work on with our delegation and throw out there and get uh, and succeed with. So anyhow, I will wrap up here. But um, yeah, running for state delegate, I'm uh, running alongside April Rose and Justin Reedy. Uh, we're running on a ticket together because I've been working, like I said, I've been working very closely with them for a number of years, and they they uh, they asked for me to, to come on with them. I certainly, you know, I didn't have, I wasn't able to make that decision. I was happy that they brought me on. But um, there's, a, yeah, the election will be July 19th. There's uh, eight of us running for three spots, so you've got a couple options. Uh, so hopefully you can consider throwing me in there as one of your three. Uh, and if you have any questions, happy to stick around and answer them. Uh, it's not too long because I've got a whole list here of uh, <laughs> wedding-related uh, activities I got to be doing. Yeah, just just this little tiny list. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've got signs here if anybody wants to take them. So thank you, appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Here's a question. Right? And I didn't know he was going to be here, so this is he didn't ask me to ask this. A lot of a lot of people think you're young. 
part of it is because you introduced me as your grandfather. <laughs> but can you just tell people, I think it's so important in Annapolis that, you, that you're not just a Carroll County person, that you have statewide connections. Uh, how many of the Republican Central Committees have you visited? How much have you done around the state? Maybe not even prepping for this, but just yeah. as part of the Republican Party. Yeah, I mean, when I was when I was running to become a delegate for the 2020 RNC convention and also the third chairman, we've got uh, there's a central committee in every single county in Baltimore City. I mean, I traveled all the way to you know Garrett County down to Somerset County for a 45 minute meeting in a woman's family room. Uh, that was a four-hour drive <laughs> um, there and then four hours back. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been all over the, uh, I, like Kenny was saying, I do have connections across the entire state, which I think that's why Matt brought me in here was to, to help with getting guest speakers um, just because of some of the relationships I had. And I do think that's important with sending someone down because, I mean, a lot of times, sometimes people think, oh, well, you know, what's a Carroll County delegate, a Republican Carroll County delegate going to do down in Annapolis, which is obviously controlled by the Democrats primarily, in the General Assembly at least. Um, and it's true, I mean, if you go down there thinking you're gonna change the world, that's probably not gonna happen as a Republican. However, what you can do is, if you go down there and you have these good relationships, and I have, and because of my connections and the work I've done with the party statewide, I mean, I do have these relationships with delegates and the senators from not just Carroll County, but across the whole state. and. You can accomplish good things, and I'll give you an example. Um, one of the things that, as the Carroll County delegation, that you can do is bring back money. Obviously, Maryland taxes the hell out of us, and if they're going to take our money, we might as well try to get a portion of it back. Unless you guys would rather go to, you know, PG County or Baltimore City. Maybe Baltimore City School System uses more books. Um, but um, yeah, if they're going to take, if they're going to tax us, we might as well make sure some of those bucks come back to Carroll County. And our delegation has done a really good job of seeing that, um, of having success with that. Just this last year, uh, I mean, they brought back tons of money, whether it was to help with the Bell Tower in Westminster, um, New Windsor with a big sewer project, which they desperately need out there, to building um, a veterans uh, hospital. Um, out um, right down on 20, um, right down 32 in Eldersburg. I mean, they could have put that thing anywhere in Maryland, and um, that was due to the work, really good work of our county officials and our delegation of fighting to get that. And I think that I think just that was like a 60 some million dollar project that's, that's coming to Carroll County. So um, there there are things that you could do, but um, I don't plan to just go down there and just you know yell and rant wave my hands and uh, you know maybe make a headline because um, that's not exactly how you get anything done down there. I would there. like to reiterate that I've known Chris for a while um, and he's a solid guy, a common sense guy. Uh, I know what we try to do is we try to keep things open-minded and, and we love to hear from our members and he's a solid character in the community and I'm not saying that um, other than he's a solid character and he is well-connected doesn't matter what political party, some of the people, the organizations I belong to are of a different ilk. And I know that when I was going to Annapolis to petition for zoning, because um, I had to have zoning variances local and all kinds of stuff, I had to go to Annapolis. And I can tell you that the team that he represents work with me. And we don't necessarily see eye to eye on everything. But I will tell you, I was, I felt there was a high level of integrity, common sense, and I'll just leave it at that. Chris, I wish you well, and I'll come to you. Um, I don't wish you well on that list that you have in front of me. But thank you again. I wish you well. Enjoy your wedding. And um, if anybody has any questions, just say to me a minute or two. Yep, yep. Okay. Well, it's about 20 after 1, and we really like.